So far away, Lucas, I imagine this video is going to make no money given it has drugs right there in the title. So anything you'd like to say? Um, trans rights matter. I guess that's a controversial apparent thing. Yeah, it is on YouTube. Eat a dick, YouTube. There are a lot of charities out there whose primary task is teaching kids that drugs are for fucking losers with varying levels of success. However, it's arguable that none of these charities have messed up harder than the Bureau for At-Risk Youth, who somehow inexplicably created a bunch of pencils encouraging kids to do tons of drugs. Yeah, and there's always these like weird things that like, kids need to be aware of, isn't there? Yeah, like every generation has its moral panic that um, parents and self-opposed guardians take it upon themselves to protect children from. In the early 1990s, it was drugs, but then later in that same decade, it was like violent video games. And prior to that, it was violent music and then Dungeons and Dragons, things like that. And Lucas, what is your favourite moral panic that children have had to be protected from? Probably Night Trap. Oh yeah, Night Trap, the video game. Okay, so this is a very, very specific example. And Lucas, for the people out there who are as confused as I was for the first five seconds of that conversation, and we'd have to explain to them what Night Trap is and why children had to be protected from it. Yeah, so Night Trap was a video game, I think, released in the 90s, like back in the ESRB uh, whole thing with Mortal Kombat as well. Mm -hmm. And it's like a FMV, like full motion video game where basically like there were a bunch of women in a house and they got attacked by invaders and had to like you basically had to use different cameras and traps and stuff to like fight them off and lucas have you ever played the game because from that description that does sound like you know kind of disturbing it's a video game where like you watch people get violently assaulted and abducted in their home and in reality that's not the game at all is it it's like it's almost like Looney Tunes levels of fucking shenanigans that occur during that game, isn't it? Yeah, the concept sounds really bad, but it is a just really stupid, campy and hammy with no budget whatsoever. And presumably this very conversation is going to be interspersed with clips from the game. And keep in mind, when you see footage of men dressed as ninjas being pushed down a hole, that this video game um, was being touted as something that was going to fucking just scar your children for life. And I think the only way to describe the reaction or overreaction, I should say, to this game is embarrassing. Because it is clearly one of those situations where um, the people complaining about it had no fucking idea what it was and very clearly did not play it. Because if they did, they would have seen, oh, what? there's nothing wrong here. It's like... More violent shit happens in, like, Jason and Freddy Krueger movies. Like, it's, it's campy as awful, and they play that up. It's like, you're playing the role of a man in charge of some traps in a house. You basically play, like, fucking Fred from, like, Scooby-Doo. Trying to, like, trap <laughs> villains and stuff in various areas of the house, and it is cartoonish, the level of violence that is in it. It's the only way to describe it. And just, to, like, go back and look at that. Like, this has been position as oh this is going to scar children for life it's like what that seven ninjas might break into their house it's like what that'd be awesome and the history of video games is just rife with these sort of stories of just people not understanding what video games are or how they're played hearing a broad description of a video game and going we, we can't let children play that because okay they don't let them play it and we'll bring it back to the Bureau of At-Risk Youth. The target they set their sights on was drugs. And they decided that the best way um, to get a message to the PlayStation generation was with pencils. Who doesn't love stationery, Lucas? Yeah, I mean, as you say, the PlayStation generation, like we're all out there thinking about just Game Boys and Nintendo and like, what's Mario going to do when he gets home? And the, the they're like, is... pencils, man. The thing is, though, right, I think it's safe to say that um, a, a lot of people of our age, at least, like, you know, 25 to 30 years old, did go through that phase uh, when they were younger of, like, the pencils or the pens you had at school. Like, they were a star symbol. Like, when remember when those smelly gel pens came out? Oh, yeah, yeah. I like, remember, like, the arms race of who can get the, pen, the pens that smell the nicest, which is a, a really bad lesson to teach kids, admittedly. Like, oh, yeah, sniff. Um, solvents, it's great. It's like, I don't know how they got made. And like, maybe that's something that they, a 
a charity like the At Risk Bureau that you would teach you that like, don't fucking sniff pens. Don't sniff solvents, they're really fucking bad for you. Yeah, solvent abuse can kill kids. Kill in- I still remember seeing that on the back of a can of links that I got when I was 12 years old. I was like, why am I getting it then? The warning that they should have put on the back of a fucking Lynx can was please do not set this on fire and throw like a fucking grenade. And you know what, we could talk about that for a bit because I did grow up in a pretty rough neighbourhood and the easiest way for me to just describe how rough the neighbourhood was is that um, my favourite pastime and the favourite pastime of a lot of kids on my estate was throwing rocks at passing trains. All right. Uh, because my house was literally 10 foot away from a set of train tracks. Uh, so what we'd do is just throw rocks at trains and that was our form of entertainment. It's weird when you see like weird adults remember those days fondly of, oh, I remember when you go out on an adventure and your mum wouldn't know where you are and it wasn't a big deal. It's like, that's probably not a good thing that you didn't know where your children were. Yeah. Because kids are like, I used to, like, some of the places I used to go play were like abandoned factories and stuff. And looking back, fucking I hell. was lucky not to get fucking injured or killed. The shit Why we used to do. Yeah. Lucas, my favourite pastime as a kid was throwing rocks at trains. There's parks. No, not in where I grew up. Christ. We didn't have a park, Lucas. The only park we had is where people did drugs. Speaking of which, don't fucking do them. Yeah, and Lucas, I'm guessing this is a story you've seen spread around on the internet many times before, yes? Of the drug pencils. I don't know whether I've seen it on the internet or we've discussed it in the past. But presumably everybody watching this who's spent any real time on the internet has seen some variation of the image behind me, which is a pencil with the words too cool to do drugs on it. That has been sharpened, uh, which changes the message somewhat dramatically from too cool to do drugs to cool to do drugs to do drugs to simply, and this is my favourite one, drugs. Because there's just something about a tiny little pencil with the word drugs on it that's really fucking funny to me. And that's the best part is... The moment the first word gets shaven away, it's just the opposite message. And it continues to get worse the more you sharpen the pencil to the point where it just says drugs on it. And I kind of wish I could just buy a t-shirt that said that on it. I was just having a think in my head then of like, how could we make the too cool to do drugs work? And if you have the message start like in the armpit, so like the two gets covered up by your arms. Just cool to do When you put drugs. your arm down and then it just says cool to do drugs across the rest of the t-shirt. And then you get a thumbs up. But that's the thing, like, I would wear a t-shirt that just said drugs on it, just ironically, because it's funny. <laughs> it's like when you watch Jackass and some of the shirts that they wear, mm, like, where yeah. Johnny Knoxville just has a t-shirt that just says Johnny on it. Like, it's, like, so fun. Like, I want to get that and I wear it, because that's not my name. <laughs> but for anyone wondering, yeah, that image is 100% real, and the Bureau for At-Risk Youth did actually hand out pencils with that message on it. However, the story about it that you've likely heard is very much embellished. Uh, so what about this story has been embellished then, Carl? Uh, well, some versions of the story say that like these were sent out statewide and that thousands upon thousands of children got these pencils and that the mistake wasn't noticed um, until many weeks later. In reality, only one school received any of the pencils. It was an elementary school in New York, which was supposed to serve as a sort of trial run to see how well the children responded to the message on the pencils. And it's like, that to me is almost funnier than be sending out thousands of them. It's like... Look, we've got a message here, too cool to do drugs, but we need to, like, do a trial run. Is the message, like, you know, impactful enough for the children to get it? You'll like, focus test your pencils, Carl. Is that all you really need to do to show them a picture like Keith Richards and say, do you want to look like this when you're 70? It's like, fuck no. Like, fair play to Keith Richards for still being alive, but man, does he look like a ball sack. So admittedly, the story here is a lot more small scale than other places reporting on it may have been, like, led you to assume, but... It's way, way funnier because the detail they often miss out is that this mistake was noticed by a 10-year-old seconds after they handed the pencils out. So, like, who is this kid that just legendarily pointed out that mistake? Uh, that was a 10-year-old called Cody Mosier who, upon being handed one of the pencils, immediately pointed out that the message would be inverted if you just sharpened it a little bit. To which sheepish members of the Bureau for At-Risk Youth were like, oh, fuck no. Oh, no. <laughs> because, like, as, as you can see behind us, folks, like, the message is immediately destroyed the instant you actually try to use the pencil as a pencil. And it eventually just gets whittled down to just a pencil saying drugs on it. And you, do, you don't want kids having that pencil, do you? 
You really don't. And it's like really bothers me that if they just inverse the print, like it would have just whittled down to too cool. Yeah. And the best thing about it is that Cody Mosier, who remember was 10 years old when he noticed this problem that fully grown adults paid, paid fucking money to figure this shit out, didn't notice, uh, was interviewed by the New York Times. And they asked him, so why do you think nobody but you noticed this issue? And he just sat and said, maybe they didn't sharpen their pencils. <laughs> and that's a quote so fucking ice cold. That kid does not need a pencil to tell him how fucking cool he is. That kid is a fucking don.